Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel, Tech Lead and Partner at Westball. And first of all, before all you guys who said you missed me were wondering where I went, I uh, just want to let you know I was taking a couple of days off, just relaxing out, just didn't do. Now, the other thing that you guys know is that I am a full-time tech lead, not really a YouTuber, so that always takes the precedence, but I have not forgotten you guys, my subscribers, my army of PHP guys, we are back again. So today's video, we'll be talking about a uh, comment that a guy called Dirty Mint actually sent in to me. And Dirty is wondering how much should he be charging for his PHP projects? Are there a rough idea? And also some of the concerns he has, especially with, with his feeling that he is either overcharging somebody or maybe they feel that you're undercharging somebody. So that uh, I for one would have loved it if someone had actually made a video about it way back in the day so that I knew what I was charging. So I have a little bit of experience here and it has changed over the years. So in this part one, right, let's talk about how you price something to a client. And Dirty Min is bringing out a really interesting uh, topic, which I feel very strongly about, which is he feels that at some points he is overcharging the client. He feels that he's not delivering enough value and he feels a little bit guilty about this. And this is pretty common for developers, uh, especially with the starting out, I mean, you're starting out consulting or freelancing or something like this, that you're really not sure what is the value you're generating to the client and also some of the feedback you're getting from the client, right? And you feel that maybe your skills aren't up there, especially for those of you who maybe don't have a traditional route of software development like myself, you know, use an example of an airline ticket, okay? And the first point about it is that value really depends on the customer. It really depends a lot on the customer. This is something I didn't quite understand when I first started out. Take for example, uh, in business class, right? You are a high powered executive. You're flying to London for a meeting. You're gonna turn around there and you're gonna fly somewhere else. And you might be doing something that maybe caught a $1 million deal or something like this. So you need the sleep, you need the, the benefits of the business class chair. Or you could be someone who's backpacking the world, you know, you're gonna be making several stops around, you're gonna London, you're gonna Paris, you're gonna all Europe, and you really wanna stretch that extra dollar. You're not really too concerned if you miss your flight or if there's timing or how much luggage you have or how much time you spend at immigration. So this is the first thing I want you guys to understand, right? Value is also determined by the customer. They, certain customers will get more value from your services and some certain customers will get less value from your services because of the kind of customer they are. A big proportion of this is the size of your client. I, I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? A bigger client has more money and they are gonna revive more value. Smaller client, less money. So when I first started, right, I was catering to, of course, you know, the entry level customers, whoever I walked through the door, I would be talking to them. And I had a feeling of trying to like create some value for these guys. And this is where the problem happens, right? You got particular clients that would even in the best of circumstances, never achieve uh, any kind of goal because they're... here's point number one. The prices you charge are based on the customer that you serve. This is a very important point. And this is the part that a lot of people have a problem um, getting through. Now we want to be fair to our customers, right? You want to be, you know, delivering value to them, but at the same time, you want to get a fair day's wage. I'll talk about that in point two. So if you're doing, you're dealing with that economy class customer or that budget class customer, they, no matter what they are, no matter how good your ticket is, all the services, whatever you provide, they are not getting that value back. They will not get that value back. And regardless of how good you are serving them, you know, the cost that you're incurring, they will feel that it's not worth. They're very price sensitive. So uh, a lot of you guys who feel that your skills are not at enterprise level or business level, uh, you feel that if you charge a little bit more for these guys, they'll feel a little bit of pain. They will not value that service. I can tell you whether you're doing a super job or medium job or bottom job really makes no difference to these uh, customers because they cannot get that value. Now, I'll give you some examples. In the previous, when I first started out, right, I was dealing a lot 
with a lot of startup guys with stars in their eyes and stuff, you know, they had big dreams, but really, really thin on the wallet. And what would happen is that we would invest, I would put a lot, I put my best effort in there, right? And no matter what I did, the projects would fail because not just based on that, but based on a lot of factors, and especially since they were not prepared to take the next stage, you know? Tech is only one component. You need marketing, you need a team of people, you need ideas that keep changing. And what will happen is that you feel that you delivered no value to this guy, it's a big waste and you have a real big problem asking for more money. And I know a lot of you guys feel that way, you feel a little bit guilty that the projects are not going as what they think, they're not making that kind of money, and then you feel very upset that maybe it's your skill level, your clients feel it's a skill level, it could be anything in between. But I wanna take you back that a certain proportion of this is based on the client's size, based on the client's ability to make full use of what you've got. Okay, so that's the first element of that. On one hand is these budget guys. On the other hand, right, are these super enterprises, which I have worked for as well. Now these guys, you know, are very strange. If you're bidding for a project and one bid is say $50,000 and you say you give them $30,000, they're probably gonna go with the 50,000 because they're a bit suspicious of why there's a $20,000 difference. So these are the guys on the other hand of the spectrum, that business class traveler. And when something's too cheap, they worry about the deliverability, right? The what's going to happen with your software, maybe there's a problem, what, that's why it's really cheap. They're not too concerned that you want to learn and you're, maybe you don't mind taking less money or you, you know, don't need a new Lamborghini. That is what they're caring about. So this is the size of the customer thing that you need to take into account. And I want you guys to change your preference in, in terms of you know, the idea that or we look for big customers in order to you know, line our pockets with money. I can tell you that it's probably not the case. You want to help every single person, you know, if it's nonprofit or whatever it is, but they, these people have different needs and different things. And that's one thing that you should really look into that. Now, adding on to this point, right, is the idea of a little bit of pity income. And this is where we're talking about number two, which is, how much do you charge where you're having a reasonable standard of living? And this part took me a couple of years, about three to four years. I always thought that I had to do the hard yards to um, you know, earn that living. The truth, the next issue is how much should you charge where you have a diff, uh, acceptable standard of living? Now, I live in Singapore, and some of you guys live in the US, some of you guys live in India. You, what you want to do is you want to take into account what you would want to earn to live in these countries and enjoy a certain standard of living. I can't tell you what that standard of living is, but you know, you can roughly say that, you know, I want to, uh, you know, have coffee in the morning, I want to have save money. All these things have to go into an equation and that has to be a don't undersell yourself. I think the most you should be doing, most for the hard yards, right, is about three months. Honestly, if you are a decent coder or you just get it, three months is about the maximum you should take about, you know, underpaid or un, you know, maybe just to get your skill level to a certain level. After that, you should be looking at some ratio of the market price. You should not be taking an underpriced job. You should not be accepting anything below that, even if your confidence level is not there, you should be looking for something that's very close to discount period goals, you know? Try before you buy, that's a three month period. So there's a second point that, and the third point when it comes to this pricing, right, is about the value you create. So this is the part where, you know, should we developers only be getting what is, uh, the, uh, the acceptable standard, you know, we're in only the content thing. And I disagree entirely about this thing. We should be making whatever we are part of, right? If, if, you know, if someone's like Jeff Bezos and all these guys and you're behind this stuff, you're coding some of this stuff, shouldn't you get a cut of that action? Shouldn't you get that big win? Because these things are exponential. So this is the point where, you know, a lot of devs generally just sit back when they're contented with their salaries or with the thing. And this is the part that, you know, you want to try to make look, look at, you know, how can I benefit 
financially from the project value. What you want to do is assess the value over there and assess how much percentage of that should you be entitled to. This is what I call the bonus level. And this is another part of um, the equation that usually some companies, if they're working with you, they just pay you what is acceptable and that's it. They hope that you never ask for it. And there's no reason why you shouldn't be part of the upside if you have put in not just your energy and your skill level, but also your commitment into the project, you should get a stake in that company. And that can really help your lifestyle. You could be you know, a guy who just finishes five years of this and one of these things, and that's it. You know, you're sitting on having palm trees and then we can talk about all the other languages that you want to build, all that kind of stuff, if you're doing this part of the equation. So these are the three, what I call parts of a decision tree. And in the next video, what I'll just be giving you some benchmarking ideas of how I do it and how you should be doing it uh, so that you can get the best outcome, just not just for yourself in terms of earning, being happy about it, and also for your clients where they feel it's reasonable or they feel like, look, I don't think any client when it comes to paying, they feel very reasonable about anything, but where something feels equitable and you can go to sleep at night. All right, so check, tune in for the next video. For the time being, that's the bottom line because tech needs it, so.